be joining our church today after the homily. Petitions are at the entryways of church this weekend, which pertain to the Women's Equality Act, which benefit and protect women and children. We strongly urge you to please stop and sign these petitions so that the bills can be passed into law. We thank everyone who supported last weekend's Sunday Super Bowl of Caring Project. Next Sunday, St. Mary's Guild will be hosting a Valentine's Day weekend coffee hour after the 8 and 10 a.m. Masses. Many thanks to all who made monetary donations to the Pregnancy Care Center and all those who brought in baby gifts to our recent Celebrate Life baby shower. Faith formation and snack will take place in the lake today. The youth group that is scheduled tonight has been canceled due to the weather. There is more information on upcoming events and activities that can be found in this week's bulletin. We ask you now to please make sure your cell phone is in the silent mode. Now we invite you to take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and minds to enter into this time of praise and worship. Five. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. Amen. We welcome all of you here to our wonderful celebration this morning. A special welcome to Bob Tutin and his family. His Bob will be welcomed into the faith today. And a special welcome to Father Frank Fusari, who is the brother-in-law of Bob. So welcome to Father Frank. Uh -huh. As we give thanks and praise for God this morning, let's take a moment as we call on our sins and ask for God's pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
Now this is a true lamb of God. <laughs> Thank you for bringing him in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. We want with it participants, not sweet hands, okay? So I'm going to ask you a favor. I want you to bow your heads down like this, and then we're going to give you a blessing and send you on your way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this time to give you thanks and praise. And we thank you for the gift of these children to come and grow in the faith. Bless them in that endeavor and bless their teachers with your wisdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Off you go to the right. Thank you much. The reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Job spoke, saying, It's not man's life on earth a drudgery. Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shame, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, When shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver, weaver, <coughs> weaver's shuffle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
On Friday morning, while reading the newspaper, I came across a letter written in the Ask Amy column, which I check out every once in a while. The letter was from a 60-year-old married woman who was seeking advice on how to deal with a very stressful situation going on in her life. She's the only daughter of an 88-year-old mother who resides in a nursing home. The daughter's brother lives far away, out of state, and other family members are estranged from this mother. So this daughter sees herself as her mom's only emotional support. The mother never interacts with the other residents and complains constantly, making life very difficult for the nursing home staff and for her daughter. Several visits a week from the daughter apparently are not good enough for mom. She complains about that. Thus, the daughter feels tremendous stress, even losing weight over the ordeal. And she feels growing bitterness, especially towards her mother. This letter highlights the theme of suffering, which is found in all of our readings today. The letter highlights social suffering, broken or strained relationships going on, plenty of emotional suffering for everybody involved, and physical suffering implied by the mother's need for a nursing home and certainly the daughter's own physical concerns. Now, if you were the one to be asked for advice by the daughter in this letter, what would you suggest to her in dealing with these different kinds of suffering. Now, suffering is one of life's great mysteries. Many don't understand why we have it. And many people have wondered over the years, why do bad things happen to good people? If we have a God who is love and goodness itself, how can God allow suffering and evil in his created world? Well, we'll never have a complete answer to those kinds of questions in this lifetime, but we can make sense that suffering is necessary to some extent in human living. Every day we suffer from something, whether it's feeling hunger, or some kind of bodily pain, or anxiety, or some other need. And pain serves to alert us to the fact that something is wrong and needs healing, needs attention, and perhaps rest, or food, or medication, or reassuring presence and kind words can go a long way in easing mind, body, and spirit in somebody's life. You know, some suffering may be totally unavoidable, no matter how many precautions we take, yet much suffering in our world is certainly needless and unnecessary. People often cause so much suffering in their own lives and in others' lives due to many different factors. For example, many health problems could be prevented and longer lives could be enjoyed with better diets, more sleep, sufficient amount of exercise, and avoiding dangerous habits like smoking, drinking alcohol, and drugs. And yet, sometimes we're born with bodily conditions that may inevitably lead to many health problems and limits. And that too is a part of suffering's great mystery. And yet, God still has great use for those who are considered weakest or sickest among us. Because they can still inspire us in their condition. They can help us to be more grateful for the gifts that we enjoy. They teach us to embrace our mortality more, and they certainly can show us the beauty of God in many different ways. For example, think about those who have Down syndrome, retardation, or those who are confined to wheelchairs maybe for the rest of their lives, or those who bravely face their cancer, and we all know somebody who's suffering with cancer, don't we? And you know, much suffering in this world is really due to plain old-fashioned hatred. Hatred of self, maybe hatred of other people, maybe both. And that gives rise to prejudice, crime, war, terrorism. 
And suffering also stems from bad decision making. Maybe due to ignorance, or due to selfishness, maybe immoral ambitions. And that's how people can ruin a heck of a lot of relationships, whether it's family relationships, maybe marriages, maybe ruin business plans, or other personal pursuits. Ask the Seattle Seahawks and their football fans about suffering. <laughs> they can tell you a lot about that right now. It's going to be a long offseason. Think about it. The team was a minute away and a few inches from the goal line and a very likely Super Bowl victory. And most people would agree that they're choosing a passing play which was intercepted over a running play which had worked for them all day was one of the worst decisions not only in football history but in sports history. I hope they sleep well at night. I hope they learn well at heel. Quite often, people say things or do things which end up hurting a lot of other people, including themselves, whether it's intended or unintended. Jesus clearly teaches us throughout the Gospels that we need to be very careful about our words and actions because once something is said or done, we cannot take it back, folks. We cannot erase the past. What's done is done. And they can take on lives of their own. And they could lead to good consequences or bad ones in the world around us and in our life's journey. But you know, the hope for us is that in the midst of any kind of suffering, God is right there with us. In the midst of any trial we go through. But do we recognize it? As the saying goes, faith is not true faith unless it's been tested, right? And we've all been tested to some degree or another. And maybe that's one of the main lessons from the book of Job, which offers our first reading today. It is a fictional story. It's not about a real person named Job. It's a fictional character that teaches us truths about how we look at the mystery of suffering in the world. A man named Job does a lot of complaining in this story, which may seem understandable if you remember what he went through. Now here's as holy and good a person as you ever find, doing very well for himself. He's healthy and happy, he has a wife and kids, he's got plenty of land and livestock and many servants to support his livelihood. He seems to have it all together. And then suddenly everything changes. And his faith is suddenly shaken to its core. In one short period, he loses all of his livestock, his servants are all killed, most of them murdered by invaders. A windstorm destroys a house in which all of Job's children are in, and they die. And soon after, Job himself becomes ill, covered from head to toe with sores. Painful existence. And you think you've had a bad day. <laughs> Thus, it's no wonder that we hear Job say in today's first reading, Is not man's life a drudgery? Isn't it a drag? My days come to an end without hope. I shall not see happiness again. End quote. Job doesn't understand it. It makes no sense whatsoever. He thought he did everything God asked him to do, and look at all this that's happening. But God gets it. He sees the bigger picture as to how all this plays its part. And you know what the miracle of the story is? That Job never completely loses faith in God. But his constant whining isn't helping either, is it? The story ends, as we all hope stories would end, happily ever after. God corrects Job in all of his whining and complaining, and he blesses Job with greater peace and prosperity than he ever had before. You know, as Christians, following what Jesus asked of us, may not greatly reward us immediately or at all in this world, but it can lead to a treasure chest of peace and joy forever in the life to come in heaven, where suffering no longer exists. Isn't that what we all want? And you know, it takes a strong faith to hang on to that kind of hope. Do you have that kind of strong faith? 
You know what? Suffering sometimes can actually be good. Such as, think about exercising your bodies. No pain, no gain, right? Or perhaps you sacrifice something or your own bodily needs for your loved one's benefit. Or maybe, considering Lent is only a, a week and a half away, maybe fasting from certain things can not only benefit other people, but help you grow spiritually. Good food to think about for Lent coming up. And suffering can take on a greater meaning when it's endured for the right reasons, like standing up for peace and justice for somebody else who maybe is being abused or misused or neglected. And you know, St. Paul implies that in our second reading today, in his letter, and he writes this, remember. I have made myself a slave to all, to win over as many as possible. All this I do for the sake of the gospel. Now, we know that being a slave sounds bad to us, considering our country's not so pretty history with it. But Paul's way of using it is actually very good and spot on. Because when Paul's using it, he's saying, I consider other people around me more important than myself. And I freely decide to be a slave to Christ. That is, I'm going to live my whole life to following what Jesus wants, not what I want. Because if I go by my ways, I'm going to muck it all up. But if I go by Jesus' way, it's going to be a glorious road. And Paul says, basically, he is willing to endure all these kinds of hardships of rejection and spittings and beatings and mockery and imprisonment and even death. Sound familiar? Because Jesus went through all those things. And why would he do it? Because he hopes that example of being Jesus to others is going to bring people to seeing God's way of doing things, not their own selfish intentions. That's what a true Christian is willing to do. How about you? What are you willing to suffer for out of your love for Jesus? How can you prove your love to Jesus? That's Paul's challenge to us today through this letter. You know, at this very moment, all around our state, all around our country, all around our world, there are people who are suffering who don't have to. For example, there is plenty of food and clean water for the whole world to share and enjoy, and yet many don't have access to such things because of injustices galore. Whether it's bad governmental policies, the selfishness of many rich citizens who don't like sharing that much, theft and other crimes, or maybe folks just plain indifference by many people who could give a darn about the plight of the poor. They just don't care. Maybe that's a challenge for us. Do we care? You may not be aware of the fact that today on the church's calendar is the National Day of Prayer against human trafficking, which is people's enslaving other people to do their bidding, usually to make money for themselves, but it goes beyond that. It's more about control. It's about disrespect. It's about hatred, ultimately. Hatred of humans. Did you know that back as of 2012, According to the United Nations International Labor Organization, there were almost 21 million people in the world who were living basically as slaves. And it's estimated that 1.5 million of that number are living that way right in our own country, as well as in Canada and Europe. More than a fourth of that 21 million figure, guess how old they are? 17 years old or younger. Horrible. And they were drawn in either by means of kidnapping, coercion, or false promises of saying, Oh, I'll give you money, I'll give you a job, I'll give you education, I'll even show you love. Come and do my way. They sucker them in, and they got them. Hook, line, and sinker. So they can serve in things like factories, farms, and hotels, to prostitution rings, and even private residences. Clearly, this goes against everything that Jesus stands for, folks. Yet, how many people know about it? let alone they're doing something about it. In our diocese this weekend, it's public policy weekend, when we're being asked to sign petitions to fight against a specific injustice in our state. And we hope that after Mass, you will sign the petition to be sent to Albany to promote the health and livelihood of women throughout New York State in various ways, including the following. Fighting human trafficking. 
preventing job discrimination against pregnant women, and that happens all too often, ending various forms of discrimination against parents in the workplace, battling sexual harassment at job sites, and stopping legislation which would expand state abortion laws to just about any reason to have an abortion and at any stage of the child's development in the mother's womb, including nine months. This is all part of the legislation that is known as the Women's Equality Act. And there are information sheets on the tables at the exits where these petitions are located. So our New York state bishops and numerous states' women's groups pray that you will support these pieces of legislation which will help to ease and prevent much suffering among so many in our state right now. Final thoughts. Only with the power of Christ's help can we ever hope to overcome any kind of suffering in our life. We can do nothing good without God behind it. We are never once alone in our suffering, even though sometimes it may feel like it. Job found that out. We are all called to our baptism to be just like Jesus was and is in the gospel, to reach out to the sick and the needy, to heal the brokenhearted, as we heard in the psalm, and to help people recognize more clearly the love and respect that God has for all of his wondrous creation. And as the old Diana Ross song goes, way back in 1970, we're going to test your age now. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. My apologies to Diana Ross, but you get the point, right? <laughs> That's our common mission, folks towards our common goal, to walk with one another and help one another as a community towards the light of heavenly peace, where sin and suffering are history. God bless you all.
church believe and teaches and proclaims to be revealed by God. Father, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here, so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your son Bob from sin and gave him new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon him to be his helper and guide. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of right judgment and courage, a spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill him with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bob, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. God bless you. We have a nice round of applause for Bob. As we reach out in charity and love to the most needy and hurting in the world throughout international and national efforts, we pray to the Lord. Lord For peace in the world, especially in those places that have known nothing but violence, for Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all those who work tirelessly for the betterment of their communities, especially those who work among those who have lost hope for the future, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers and all who preach the good news of Jesus Christ by their words and their lives of service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the passage of the life-affirming provisions of the Women's Equality Act, supporting all dignity of all women and girls, born and unborn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill in body, mind, and spirit, our friends, family, and in our community, especially Lynette Kolosky, Joan Tabor, Phil Simeo, Bob Moran, and all whose names are listed in the bulletin in our <coughs> prayer book of requests, that they receive healing and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, whose long lost vigil, <coughs> whose long life, lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended, especially Doris Schroeder, that all will share in the joy of the eternal banquet. And for Fred and Rosemary DePew, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions spoken in our hearts, that they will be heard and granted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's also pray for Bob Tuesday, that he may continue to grow and flourish in the faith and for his family and friends on this joyous day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we place our hope in you. Hear all of our humble petitions and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing our auditory hymn. Number 875, Jesus Heals Us, 875.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the all of his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, be with you all. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. So while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, we hope you raised up Jesus from the dead. We hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mysteries. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us the words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ your Son. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is Yours, forever and
partakers in the one bread and one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that a one in Christ we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder not to forget to sign the petitions as you leave. They're on the back tables at the back, uh, right behind the last pew there, and there's several sheets also inside the link here. And just a reminder, uh, tonight's youth ministry, Living Stations practice is canceled due to the impending storm. Apparently we're going to get a lot of snow this afternoon starting and into tomorrow, so proceed with caution this week. The Lord be with you all. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you. Have a peaceful weekend. Please join us in our final hymn, number 649, You Are Mine. Thanks for now.